Okay, welcome back, guys. This is Paul Winston, your host of the Unbound and Ambition podcast, episode number three. I'm um, coming to you live from Hollywood. So it's pretty cool because I'm in a, a studio this time and it's a much more comfortable environment than my previous two recordings I did. I'm not even going to talk about where I recorded those because it was just, it ended up turning out great, but it just wasn't the, the most ideal location. So, but we made it work, so that's all that matters. But anyway, um, in Hollywood right now, um, just like they call me Pollywood, so Hollywood, Pollywood, Pollywood from Hollywood. Okay, moving on. <laughs> in this episode, guys, I just wanted to talk about, um, there's quite a few things actually I wanted to talk about. I think the main outlining tone of this episode will be about time and time management. Um, I noticed I'm getting a lot of inquiries about how do I find the time to do this, this and that and, and time management and, and whatnot. And that was one of the, the first things when I was learning how to get ahead in life, in my industry, in what I'm doing, one of the first things I learned about was time and how to manage your time. Because it's so simple, but it, we as humans like to overcomplicate things. We like to overcomplicate everything, basically. So, But the concept of time and breaking it down and planning and scheduling is actually very, very simple. It's one of those very simple concepts of we've all got the same 24 hours. The question is, how do you use your 24, right? So the guy that's um, working at Safeway as a grocery clerk, which I've done before, by the way. Uh, and so I don't mean any disrespect to the guy who's working at Safeway as a grocery clerk, because that's a cool job while you're going through school. But all that aside, that guy has the same exact 24 hours as Warren Buffett, as Oprah Winfrey, as... Jim Carrey, as Will Smith, as anybody, you could take your pick from any successful person that's out there, like the people I just named, and the Safeway grocery clerk, which we're all familiar with because we all go to the store, right? So it's how you utilize that time. Time is one of those, it's one of those interesting, complex, but so simple dichotomies because of the fact that we're all limited in that sense. It's such a finite resource. And it has an unknown expiration date, you know, it's where we could be here today and gone tomorrow, as we all know. So that's why it became imperative for me to utilize my time to the utmost. And I think it's, I think it's important to really take a step back and, and for everybody, even myself and anybody else who's even, you know, already doing great with their time. It's important to stop once in a while and reevaluate, I think. So I remember about a year or two ago, I started breaking my days down, and I was waking up extra early. And I still continue this to this day. I wake up early. Depending on what I have going on, and depending on what time I go to bed at night, I'm usually up pretty early. I like to limit my sleep to no more than six hours. And that way I've got 18 hours left in the day to get things done. Every single day is another blank page. It's another opportunity to fill it in how you see fit, or whatever your story is going to be, right? So... For me, being in my industry, going for what I want to do, and now I've, I've got bodybuilding that we've thrown into the equation. So it's, it's important for me to really have things to down to a T as far as my schedule is concerned. Um, so managing your time, how you utilize these, these, these hours is what really, really makes or breaks you. So I just had a call with a young gentleman who was going through a tough period in, in his life, which we all go through. So I was coaching him on some stuff, and this is this is all new to me, and I don't even, honestly, I don't really know what I'm doing quite yet when it comes to coaching somebody, but I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to give whoever I'm talking to the best of me, and whatever it is that I can give them as far as my knowledge is concerned. So, again, when it comes to this, it's as simple as breaking it down to your sleep, first and foremost, okay? How many hours do you sleep a night? Okay. Then we calculate it out from there. For me, I sleep six hours. Then I've got at least two hours for the gym. Okay, normal times when the gyms are open, they're not open right now in California, but normally it's two hours in the gym, and then right now I'm doing double days. I'm fortunate in the sense that I have access to a private gym. So I still get my, my two hours in, and then I'm doing cardio, usually later in the day because my access is limited to this private gym. So I have to work around that particular schedule 
So I'll get the gym in two hours in the morning, and I'm strictly weights inside of that uh, private gym. Then I'll do my cardio at the end of the night because I can do cardio outside. And I'll get my pull-ups in and my push-ups and whatever else I've got to do, um, I'll do that outside. And, you know, I just had somebody recently ask me, well, well, how do you do it outside if it's raining? What do you mean, how do I do it outside if it's raining? I'll put a, I'll put a sweatshirt on, right? We're in the summer right now. And there's this crazy heat wave going through, so I don't have to worry about that. And even if it was raining, I wouldn't worry about it. What's it going to do? Is it going to kill you? No. Now, if, you're, if you live out in the snow, I mean, you know, where it's a blizzard... That's a whole other story where you got you got to kind of reevaluate, you know, what you're going to do or how you're going to do it. But there's still no excuse. The time factor is as simple as that. Break it down into each little chunk. I'm not going to go through all my schedule. My schedule changes so often that I don't always have the same exact time blocks for everything that I'm doing. Sometimes my workout routine may be a little less. Sometimes it may be a little more, depending on what I have going on. So if I'm shooting, let's say tomorrow, depending on what my coach has me doing, my training may be very minimal if I'm shooting shirtless tomorrow. If I've got a show coming up, my training will be kind of minimal the day before because of the fact that when it comes to bodybuilding and, and doing shirtless scenes for TV and, and movies, it's it's down to a science to where you don't want to over pump basically. So you got to kind of save that up. But a few days leading up to that, I'm going to be going extremely hard. Because I'm going to want that fullness in my muscles. So, again, depending on what I have going on, my schedule will change. And sometimes it'll change very drastically. For me, again, starts with the sleep. Then we go to the gym. My gym and sleep are the two most important factors of my day. Then it goes to office work time. Okay? Now, usually what I'll do is I'll put my office work time in chunks. Sometimes it has to be broke up. But most of the time it'll be in like a, like a two to a four hour chunk. I'm a big believer in taking frequent breaks. Because I'm just like anybody else, I get burned out if I'm sitting there for too long. If I'm in the office looking at a computer and doing uh, budget breakdowns and scheduling and, and or writing scripts, or I'll always try to break it into chunks and take frequent breaks, at least every hour, hour and a half, something like that. So where my office is located, street parking is available, or I can do permit parking, which I have the permit parking, but I usually park in the street because it it's a, t- it's a meter. So that it makes me get up and move and go refeed the meter. So that's pretty cool. That's how I got myself into that flow of getting up and moving around every so often. So I won't feed the meter the full time. I'll feed it an hour at a time. Now, some people might think that's stupid. Other people might think it's whatever. I don't care. For me, it works. Find out what works for you. Find out what works for you and utilize that into your routine. Now, I'm the kind of person where I learn a little slower. Honestly, it takes me a while to get through something if I'm reading it. I have to read things, I have to reread things, and I have to reread things again. And I have to take notes on certain things for me to fully comprehend something if I'm going to go into a meeting and I need to talk to some producers about X, Y, and Z. I need to reread it several times and take notes and sticky pads and whatever else I'm doing to make sure that I get it. And it's important to remember that because everybody learns differently. Doesn't mean that you're stupid, doesn't mean that you're anything else other than you learn differently than anybody else. And that's fine because everybody is different. So breaking up your your time schedule is is one of the most important things, of course. And it leads me into the excuses thing because I realized when I was talking to somebody else recently about time, they were complaining over and over again and making up excuses of why they don't have time for this or that or the other. There's always time. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, for you if you're doing the what was me or if you're making up excuses for yourself, but there's always time. That's just you not scheduling your time properly. Now, you could have a family or you could not have a family. There's always time. You just need to schedule better. That's what it comes down to. It's all on you. Oh, well, I can't operate on six hours like you can, Paul. Why? Because you told yourself that? Because you've fed yourself this story that you can't operate on six hours? Have you tried it? Have you tried it consistently for a week? Have you tried it consistently for a month? Try it. See if it works for you. Maybe you need seven. Okay. I don't agree. But everybody's different, right? Everybody's body works a little differently. I would suggest to get it closer and closer to the six. Because 18 hours is better than 17 hours. If you could go even on less, then by all means, do it. Some days I don't sleep six. Some days I sleep four. Some days I sleep five. 
again, it all depends on what I have going on in the day. Like recently we were on set, we were, I was on set for 14 hours and, you know, we called it at a certain point because I could see it in everyone else's eyes that they were, they were getting a little, they were getting a little worn out, you know? So it's, it's one of those things where, Hey, I'm all about my team and I need to look out for them. I may be able to go 24 hours in a row, no problem, but that doesn't mean that everybody else can do that. And I understand that. So being a leader of my set, that's how I have to, I have to keep an eye on these things and I have to watch out for that. That, I remember that night I went home and slept. I only slept for four hours because I had to be back up the next day and back on set. Okay. So again, it just depends on my schedule, but I won't go over that six hour mark unless I've gone several days in a row with like three and four and five or, you know, less sleep, which I have done. And I'll continually do if it, if that's the sacrifice that needs to be made for this future that I want to create for these things that I want to do for this alignment that I'm in. It all depends on what you want. Are you willing to make that sacrifice? Sacrificing that comfort that, well, you know, there's always Monday, there's tomorrow. Okay. Hey, you know what? That choice is yours. So what I ask people when they want to talk to me about this stuff, which I'm getting a lot more now, I'm meeting a lot more people who are asking me a lot more questions about how I'm doing this or how I'm doing that or how I go about this or that or whatever. So when I, I speak to certain people, I'll ask them, are you getting the results that you want? Are you getting the results in your life that you want? If your answer is yes, then I say keep doing what you're doing. Because if your answer is yes, then that means it's working. Now, I would argue that most people would say no. If they really were honest with themselves, they would say no, they're not getting the results that they want. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's always good to, to grow, to strive for more, to want to reach for that, that higher goal, set higher goals. I think it's always important to do that. So it's not necessarily a bad thing if you're not getting the results, but you should be getting closer to getting the, those results every single day. So once you break this all down, you realize that you do have enough time. You absolutely do. Okay, so get get your your day scheduled out and you plan it. And once you start doing that, you'll realize that this day is a day that you've never seen before. And it's also a day that you'll never see again. And once you get that kind of approach to these days, to this time, I think it'll put more in perspective for you as it has for me. Okay, so perfect a perfect example is is my tomorrow. So tonight I'm probably going to go to bed at a between between 10:30 and probably 11:30. Okay? Then I'm going to be up at 5 at the latest. So, 5 o'clock I wake up. It takes me about an hour to get all my stuff at the house done as far as if I'm eating breakfast, taking my pre-workout, you know, brushing my teeth, washing my face, waking up a little bit, whatever it is. Okay, tomorrow I know it's going to take me an hour to get out of the house. I'm in the gym at 6. I'm out of the gym by 8. Okay, so it's 8 o'clock already. That's already, look at now the rest of the world's pretty much starting to wake up. I've already got a head start. Okay, it's not, it's not much, but it is a head start. I know people who wake up at 3 a.m. to get even more of a head start. And I'll get there one day. Right now, this is what works for me because I'm up later at night. Okay, 8 o'clock, I'm home. I'm showering by 8.30. Getting cleaned up and ready. Protein shake from post-gym. Okay, I'm cleaned up. I'm out of the house probably about 9.30 after I get all cleaned up and I'm ready to go to the office. Okay, I'm in the office from probably about 10 to about 2. Okay, now it's going to be a big chunk tomorrow, for example. I'm going to be in there 10 to 2 and I'll take my frequent breaks throughout. And then at 2 o'clock, I'm going to head home, eat. Right now, my eating schedule is a little spaced out because I'm taking in such low calories that I don't eat as much as I need, nearly as much as I want to, and I don't eat as frequently as I would love to. So I'm going to go home, I'm going to eat, get my water, get ready, I'm going to go do my cardio. And there's an hour. I'm, I'm back from cardio probably about 4 or 4.30. Okay, back from cardio, I'm going to start working on my plan. I'm going to take at least an hour to read my book, which right now I'm reading Conversations with God 
from Neil Donald Walsh, which is a phenomenal book. I highly recommend it. After that, I've got a conference call. The conference call is scheduled to go for an hour. After the conference call, I'm going to take 30 minutes to review my notes. I'm going to go over everything. Okay. After I go over everything for those 30 minutes, I'm going to get ready for dinner. I've got a dinner date tomorrow. Okay. Then we're going to do dinner. After we do dinner, we go home. And I've got two extra hours to relax and hang out with this special person. So my day tomorrow is pretty planned out. It's, it's pretty strict. Right? But there is some, some leeway here or there. Okay, and it's just, it's all about planning. It's all about planning out those, those hours, that time. You know, it's like, it, it just comes down to, what do you, what do you put your energy into? Okay, what do you put your energy into? Everyone experiences, let's say, stress, for example, right? Everyone experiences stress, but stress only has an effect if you give it meaning. If I give meaning to the stresses that come into my life that are going to be there, they're to be expected. And hey, you know what? Bring it. Because I'm not going to let things stress me out that don't deserve my attention or my time or to give it meaning. So it goes back to my, my whole thing about power of choice. We've all got choices. You decide, you choose what you're going to spend your time, your energy, and your efforts on. One of the most valuable lessons we can learn from time is that it teaches us that nothing lasts forever. Time is especially important for the independent filmmaker and or the entrepreneur, which essentially they could be considered one and the same. As an independent filmmaker, as an entrepreneur, you're creating as you go. You're, you've got that entrepreneurial spirit where you've, you've looked outside the box. You're creating your own path. You're forging your own path as you go along. And you know, you're improvising to the challenges. You're adapting to the circumstances and, you know, you're overcoming the obstacles that will inevitably be thrown at you. Uh, and production, this is, this is, a, I mean, I can't stress enough how, how it's, it's just going to happen and you have to expect it. You can never fully prepare for it, but you can always be prepared to the best of your ability. So it's, it's like a saying that I, I say all the time, preparing is, is so key in your journey. And that's why the time management becomes a, a, probably one of the most major catalysts in your preparation. Because if you fail to prepare, you're preparing to fail. That's why it's, you know, what I tell a lot of these young kids trying to get into film and filmmaking and acting and everything. It's, it's just so imperative for you to manage your time. And, and it took me a while to get this. So I'm hoping that I can give some of this knowledge to the, the young independent filmmaker because let's be honest, the independent filmmaker is the way of the future in our industry. I mean, there's so many options, like I've said repeatedly. So it's, it's just at the end of the day, guys, if you know what you want, the only question is, are you willing to pay the price to get there? Are you willing to sacrifice short term pleasure? For the long-term goals that you know will outweigh those short-term pleasures. And that's just kind of how I'm going to close this up here. You know, break your time down. Be smart about it. Understand you're very limited in that sense. Think about it like an hourglass. If every single day you had an hourglass that showed you how much time you had left on this planet. And each day, each grain of sand that fell down on the bottom. Gave you just another reminder of how mortal you are. Of how finite your time is. I think your perspective might change. Now, obviously, we don't have that because we don't know. Again, you could be gone tomorrow, but let's just say you had that. Your perspective should be that. Because your destiny is determined by your decisions. Destiny is determined by your decisions. The decisions that you make are the reasoning of why you are where you are right now in this moment. Have we all made some bad decisions? Absolutely. Are we going to continue to make bad decisions? Sure, it's going to happen. Are we going to fail? Yes, absolutely. And you should want to fail. Key component, as I always say, when you fail, when you fall, you just pick yourself right back up. You learned what not to do. It's that easy. It really is. All right, just a little recap here. So, number one, write your goals out. Because if you write your goals, you'll have a clear vision of what your time needs to be based on. Number two, Write out your time schedule. 
write it down all the way from to every hour to every half hour, however detailed you need it to be to help you write it down. All right, and the last thing I'll kind of touch on with this as far as what I do with my time is I maintain frame. Let me explain what I mean by that. I mean that I maintain the frame of my life. So if somebody, let's say, for example, somebody's going to enter my frame, going to enter my life, I make sure that that somebody is a compliment to my life, not a complication. Okay? Your frame should complement their frame and theirs should complement yours. So maintaining the frame, write out your schedule down to the, the utmost detail because... Again, that time, we're, we're all running out of time. And once, once you understand that, once you can grasp that, that your time is so finite, and it's, again, with the unknown expiration date, that should light a fire within you. Okay? Write out the goals. The goals is the number one thing, of course, because everything is based around that. You can't, you can't have a voyage mapped out without the goal of where your ultimate destination is. So... Write down your goals, write down your time, schedule it all out. Every single minute of your day should be accounted for. There shouldn't be any downtime. There really shouldn't. If you've got an hour to spare, okay, that's again, I'll put that in some leisure time where I'm going to spend that time with somebody special and we're going to watch a movie or we're going to hang out or we're going to go to dinner or whatever the case may be. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Have a great day. I hope we can all learn something. If you guys have questions, again, as always, please feel free to reach out continually hit me up with these uh these inquiries and i get some pretty funny funny inquiries as well you guys are awesome you know i got some i get some inappropriate ones and i get some funny ones and i get some really really intelligent heartfelt ones as well so it's a pretty good variety that we got coming in so far if you guys want to go ahead and subscribe to us on youtube on bound and ambition films subscribe hit the like button share it if you want to if you like the message we're doing cool um but i just want to thank you guys again for the opportunity to come in here and and connect with you guys on this level so i'll see you on the next one let me know what you guys want me to talk about we've already got a couple other things lined up i have a guest podcast lined up in the future as well it'll probably be another couple weeks till we get that one going but it's going to be fun all right guys thank you again and we will see you on the next one hollywood from hollywood i'm out